Hello and welcome back to Season 5 of the Lighting Your Way podcast. My name is Betty Long and I am your host during these conversations. I do hope that you enjoy them and I look forward to hearing your feedback. May 6th to May 12th is typically celebrated in the United States as National Nurses Week. And May 12th is Florence Nightingale's birthday. But in 2023, the American Nurses Association has declared that May is National Nurses Month, and you will get no argument from me. In this episode of the podcast, we switch things up a little bit, and Rebecca Zarkowski, our Vice President of Professional Practice, interviews me on not only Nurses Day celebrations, but on entrepreneurship. I hope you enjoy it, and Happy Nurses Month. Hello, Betty Long, and welcome to your (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Oh, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, it's a a little little weird, but, uh, you know. I bet it is. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in celebration of Nurses Month, and as we approach International Nurses Day, which I think is on May 12th, I thought we could turn the tables a little on you or the microphone on you (laughs) and bring you on as a guest on your own podcast show. Yeah, Rebecca, it's, uh, I don't know, it feels a little weird, but I I certainly appreciate it. Um, You know, it's a little odd being on the receiving end, but as you know, I'm always open to shaking things up a little bit. So it's, (laughs) it's your, uh, it's your microphone. Okay. Well then, first of all, happy nurses month. Yes. Happy Nurses Month. I I um I think we were talking last week on our cuddle call that the American Nurses Association has officially declared May as Nurses Month. I think they did that after COVID. Uh and you know, for so long, probably when you were in the hospital too, it was Nurses Week. And uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it was hospital week and <laughs> And, you know, yes. patient appreciation week, you know, they, they couldn't bring themselves <laughs> to make it nurses week. Uh, but I certainly, uh, I'm glad that they do. And I think COVID helped that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Certainly, as long as I've known you, uh, you've been a huge fan of celebrating nurses. That was one of the things that drew me to your company. So uh, okay. let me ask you. <laughs> Do you remember what your earliest Nurses Week efforts was? Well, uh, you know, I do love a party. And, um, (laughs) you know, I I think when I started working in the hospital in 1986, you know, we've always had those little celebrations, right, Um, that either I got involved in or I couldn't. Usually I was a staff nurse, so those those, uh, celebrations were coming to me. And they often involved pretzels, (laughs) pretzels, <laughs> ice cream, coffee, cookies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of food. Um, but it wasn't until I was in leadership that I was really able to get involved in the planning of the celebration uh, on a hospital-wide level. And then yeah, I remember in 2001, I think it was, I was working at what was then Montgomery Hospital in Norristown as a, an evening shift supervisor. And there was a chief nursing officer, um, Barb, Barb Hannon who got us all together and wanted to do something for Nurses Week. And everybody was, you know, I remember sitting around talking about, let's get pretzels and let's get pizza and, you know, um, tomato pie and all those things. And I was like, can't we just have a party? And, uh, you know, careful what you, you know, what you wish for. So I was in charge of the party. Um, And throughout the planning of it, you know, I just went out and got sponsors and, you know, doctors uh, contributed to the fund and um, wow. vendors, um, you know, it was really kind of the community. And we did something, I believe, every day, some of which involved food, I will admit. Uh, but there was a, um, I couldn't get around it. Um, it's like me ordering salad when we have parties. I, I can't understand right. it. So, can't do it. Can't yeah. do it. So we had a party at the Elmwood Park Zoo. And it was a, I think it was a Wednesday night. We did it so that it wasn't the weekend, so that at least everybody had a shot at at coming if they weren't working. And uh, we had a blast, and it was a nice night. People came out with their husbands and, you know, it, uh, you know, partners and wives, and it was just a lovely event. Um, you know, Barb spoke, 
And, um, you know, I, I think, I don't know if I dressed up as Florence then, but uh, there was, <laughs> there was, you know, joy in the air. And I think we had a DJ. So it was really, it was like the first time oh, wow. that yeah. the nurses had had a celebration and it really felt, um, you know, kind of not over the top. It wasn't over the top, but it felt like they, they really got um, recognized in some way. And, and many of them, uh, you know, would go back. Uh, we did have something for the gals and guys that were working. Uh, Cause as you know, you, you can't just shut the hospital down. Uh, so that was the first one. And I, I think, you know, having the, having the ability to do that and to, you know, convey from a leadership level to the team, you know, how, even though it was a party, right. You couldn't just give them all, you know, a thousand dollars and say, go buy right. something for yourself. Okay. Um, I, I think that really, you know, made, made an impression on me as well uh, to, to just keep doing something that <laughs> it didn't involve donuts, pizza, cookies. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, right. Anyway. So that, yeah, that was the, um, that was the first I think that was the first one. And I and well, I, I did not know that until yeah. right now. And I <laughs> think that probably um speaks novels as to certainly since I've been with Guardian Nurses in twenty fifteen, that the celebrations have been legendary and, and keep <laughs> getting better year after year. <laughs> and I know, you know, since two thousand and three when you started started Guardian Nurses, that's been a big mission of yours. And it doesn't go unrecognized by the team, certainly, because we feel pretty special. <laughs> That's um, good. I want having, you to feel special. having you celebrate us. Yeah. I want you to feel special. And I, I think, you know, when we started that, there were, I don't know how many of us. And now, of course, as we the team has grown, it's gotten a little more challenging to, to uh, mm -hmm. include, you know, activities that everybody can do and, you know, that are fun. Right. Um, and uh, of course, we do feed people when we do have a lunch. So um, but at least we <laughs> sit down for it. So it's, uh, you know, I think. Um, yeah, I think that we have had what? So, so seven, I guess, seven. Yeah. And uh, and of course, this year, uh, because of our big celebration in November for our anniversary, um, given that it was a Friday, given that it was the Friday before Mother's Day. Um, I just thought, you know, give everybody the day off. So, and we have that ability. Right. I mean, not, not hospitals do not have that ability, of course. Correct. Correct. I think that is, um, you know, word on the street is people are pretty happy about that too. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> right. The day I know. off is, is appreciated. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me ask you another question, Betty. In the last, um, Eight years since I've been here, which of our nurses' day can you remember is your favorite? Was your favorite? Wow. Oh, I, oh, I do not know. I, you know, everybody tells me that I had a really good time uh, last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, no, it wasn't last year. It was the year before. Um, throwing uh, T-shirts from the double decker bus yeah. uh, we went up broad street i i don't know i probably was thinking that i was part of the philly celebration or the eagles you know <laughs> uh yeah i don't know how about you what was your favorite i think my favorite in the last well ever but also the last eight years because all my years in the hospital you know soft to your point soft pretzels and umbrella maybe a beach blanket or or mm. breakfast for the team and it's all super nice but you don't feel as though it's a celebration of nurses it feels almost like a task and mm. I think my favorite one therefore would be the one we had where we all played games mm. okay. um, at your your place actually mm. mm -hmm. I thought you know, we were all worried about the rain and we had a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some people were dancing, some people were playing cards, some people were playing. What was that game that you were playing? Um, uh, what was oh, that? Cards Against Humanity. Cards Against Humanity, right. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. fun too, right. And uh, and at least, you know, from my perspective, um, again, I, I understand I'm making a joke about the food, but we did eat and, <laughs> and there was some champagne involved and... Uh, <laughs> 
I think people just had a good time being around uh, each other and kind of letting their hair down. So that was, that was, you know, to see that, to see the team kind of interacting and enjoying yeah. themselves was fun for me. Well, it's certainly been uh, fun for us too. So I want to move on to another topic with you, Nurse Long, besides celebrating nursing that I know is near and dear to your heart. Um, so is entrepreneurship. And you started Guardian Nurses 20 years ago, October of 2003. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Have you um, always been an entrepreneur? And if, if, if so, or if not, what got you started? You know, I, I don't think of myself uh, really as an entrepreneur. I, I don't think of myself as a business person, right? Not in the traditional sense. Um, but, you know, uh, we were talking the other day at headquarters and, and I was telling a story about uh, Joyce and I, um, who is our IT administrator. Uh, we had, we've known each other a long time and we, when we were young, we grew up together. Um, we started a grass cutting business <laughs> when I was nine or 10 and Joyce is a year younger. So um, I, I guess I've always been someone who had ideas and who liked to start things like not necessarily for, you know, it was like, well, let's do this. We'll make a quarter, you know? So, um, but I think the nurses day celebrations, you know, wine clubs, very fundraisers for organizations that I've worked for that kind of stuff. And I, I think during my career in the hospital, I, I do remember quite fondly um, working with Karen Coughlin, who's a dear friend and uh, was one of the early guardian nurses. And we would sit down at lunch. We both worked uh, in critical care and we'd sit down at lunch and, you know, we'd start to talk about, you know, of course, what else can we do <laughs> besides this? Um, and it was, you know, mobile dry cleaning, uh, ice cream stores, just crazy stuff. And I and she'd laugh and she'd say, well, listen, when you create your own business, you know, you'll hire me. And I was like, okay, all right. And of course, you know, <laughs> many years later I did. Um, but I guess, you know, when I look back, I, I guess I've always been an entrepreneur. I guess it, def it depends on how you define it, but I guess there's a little bit of that in me. Yeah. I always think like, uh, those shark tank moments, you know, right. uh, so what motivated you to start guardian nurses? Yeah, well, I, you know, back during those days of sitting around in the lunchroom and thinking about health care, um, you know, I, I, I left that hospital, uh, Karen, you know, we, we both got different jobs and I went out and worked in a software uh, company and, and did consulting and, you know, traveled on site, different sites to train and talk about uh, entering software. And you know, that was great. It was six years and I uh, got to see a lot of different places and learned a lot of skills that I use today, but I missed patients and I missed working in a hospital and, and you know, with a clinical team and, and helping people really, I mean, when you get down to it. And, um, you know, I, I transitioned back into a nursing supervisor role back at the hospital that I had left, uh, which was uh, at the time, uh, Medical College of Pennsylvania, and they had gone through several uh, buy, uh, purchases, I guess. And I had left when they, I guess they got bought by Allegheny. And then eventually those couple of six years, I think it was bought by Tenant, which I don't even know if it's in, if Tenant's still around, but they ran it into the ground, uh, as did yeah. Allegheny Health. Yeah. And so they closed the hospital, sadly. And it was a fantastic, uh, really good community hospital. And I had a lot of, you know, lifetime friends uh, that I worked with and, you know, great nurses, right, that you, you work with as a young nurse and, you know, you do great work and you learn a lot. And it was really cool. And I just, you know, I went back. I was, it was 3 to 11. And I, you know, so this is a hospital that I knew. And I would go up to the floor and I'd get called as you would as a supervisor, you know, hey, you know, Betty, we got a, a family in, you know, the sec 242. It's really upset. You know, can you come back and help? And I would go up and I'd say, well, what's wrong? And they'd say, I don't know. And I was like, okay. So I would go into the room and I would talk to the family and none of their concerns were, it felt like none of them were clinical. 
a lot of them were communication issues, right? Why didn't I know about this? Why didn't anybody tell me about my mom going for a test tomorrow? And did we get the results of the MR? Like all those things, it wasn't about, you know, the nurses giving bad care, right? Delivery, yeah, the delivery yeah. of care. It was always about communication. I thought, God, what happened? You know, in the time, in the time that I left, what happened? Well, you know, everybody's busy, but they were busy when I left. So what's going on now in healthcare that's making me feel like, you know, there there's something going on? So that was one constant um, f- point of friction for me. I'd go in and there were always seemingly um, situations like that. And then in 1999, my uh, Aunt Betty and Uncle George, who lived in South Philly, uh, they uh, did not have any children and Uncle George fell down the steps. It was a row home and he was taken to a university hospital. And Aunt Betty called and I went in, he was in the ICU and as the resident w- was trying to explain to her, who was then in her 80s, you know, we need to put a breathing tube down your husband's throat. Um, she looked back at me and I looked at her and I thought, "Ooh, she has no idea what's going to happen, nor does she have any sense of what the next six months might look like. And I thought to myself, we, you know, what do families do that don't have a nurse or a doctor or somebody who can navigate the system and explain it and kind of anticipate what's next. And so that was really the idea, you know, how do I do that? And, you know, along with the professional side of it being, we're not communicating well, I thought there's got to be a way that I can help people do this. And I was aware at the time of a position called a geriatric care manager which is still in existence, and their role was to help families kind of figure out um, long-term care, and and the, a lot of them were social workers, right? A lot of you know nurses, but a lot of social workers, and that that process I knew of, right? Probably because of uh, my some of my elders, you know, elders uh, in the family. In your life, but there, yeah. yeah, but there weren't any like clinical. There there weren't people in the hospital other than, of course, nurses who were too busy. To, to have this conversation perhaps. So that was really the idea. And it took me four years to, you know, kind of figure it out. And, and I've said to you before, you know, no one during that time ever said, when I explained to them what I wanted to do, ever said, oh, that's a bad idea. Never. Right. They, were, they always were like, oh my God, I could have used you when my mom was sick. And oh my goodness, yeah. if I had had you when dad was in the hospital. And I was like, yeah. Right. That, that's what I'm right, talking about. The universe was trying to talk to you there and say, get to work, lady. We're yeah. ready for you. Yeah. And, and that was that. Right. Correct. And I felt like with all of the, you know, with all of my personal and professional journey, right, being a consultant, going out and making a PowerPoint, and making a presentation. And it wasn't about guardian nurses. It was about a software system or it was about an implementation But all of the skills that I learned through my Mm -hmm. career kind of positioned me to sit down and say, okay, let's try to make this happen. And um, thankfully, you know, I had a lot of help, right? I have, I have good friends and family who, you know, kind of pushed me along the way and, and coached me and try this, try that. Um, So I was, you know, at the early days, grateful for all that help. Oh, that's great. That's great. How about the actual, sorry, I'm asking. <laughs> How about the business model? <laughs> How did, well, <laughs> well, as I said, when we started, I, I don't even <laughs> think of myself as a business person, but uh, yeah, that wasn't the greatest business model. I don't recommend it for anybody who's listening. Um, yeah. So I, I thought that I would just hang up my shingle, you know, Betty Long, patient advocate, and you know, the phone would start ringing. Well, not really, but you know, like the, I just thought, well, this is such a need, right? They're going to, people are going to need me. And there were calls and, and the problem was every call, there was an issue or a crisis and I felt bad charging them. And the, the, the plan was to charge them per hour. And, you know, often I didn't. And that was, you know, Uh as I say, not a great business model. Um, 
And I was still working at the hospital. I did not give up my job. I also had another job working for a dear friend, Karen Kirby, and I was editing and writing for her and kind of, she had a nurse executive search firm. So I had a, you know, a couple of jobs that would allow me to do guardian nurses in the daytime and then, um, you know, work at, in the evening. So I did that. Right. And uh, the first year I I think I made $15,000 and I was like, well, okay, this is a great hobby. Yeah. Right. Uh, don't quit your, don't quit your night job. <laughs> right. Right. Don't quit your night job. I'll never get out of the hospital if I don't start charging people. So knowing that I was not, um, you know, good at that, I, I thought there's, I got to find out a better way because this isn't going to work unless, you know, I just start charging people and, I thought maybe there's another model. So uh, thanks to a friend, I got introduced to uh, the Philadelphia police and their their um, health and welfare fund. And they were looking for a nurse to help their members. And I thought, well, thank you. This was a great, um, a great connection. And so the union or the health and welfare fund paid me to be their, essentially their dedicated nurse. And they would call me when their members called them and had issues. You know, I remember my first patient was uh, diagnosed, he thought, with a brain tumor. And, uh, you know, it, it turned out it wasn't a brain tumor. But um, through that relationship with the Health and Welfare Fund, I discovered that it was much easier to have someone else pay. And then I could um, help the patient. Yeah. So, and right. I try to, I try to, you know, coach folks when I, nurses will call me, you know, I'll say, if if you can't walk out the door and say you charge, you know, blank an hour, don't bother walking out the door. Right. It's hard because, um, you know, I know in just interviewing nurses for the roles that the positions that we have available, oftentimes, you know, I hear the nurse say, I wanted to start my own advocacy company because it's the biggest missing piece in healthcare is mm. somebody to navigate you through the system and make sure it's safe and appropriate. And, you know, um, as many people that have said it have not done it. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a great idea if you can actually figure out and, and be creative and thoughtful in how um, people who need the help can get the help without it maybe not being available or accessible to them because of their financial steps. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I say that to nurses because if, you know, it's a business and we're not as nurses used to charging people, right? We, we go in, we clock in, we, we work for an employer, a health system, we get paid by the hour or salaried and we get our check and we help people all day, every day. But yep. then you go out on your own and, you know, it's not just, you know, $40 an hour. It's you got to charge a lot more because you have to be the marketing person and the accounting person and, the, you know, the secretary and, and get everything together and get the meetings. So it's a lot of things to do. And so you can't just rely on a paycheck coming in. You got to actually work for the paycheck. And, um, right, right. you know, that's why it's not you know, you don't charge $40 an hour. I remember my, um, a friend who was a therapist at the time. She, I don't know what she was, maybe she was charging one twenty five an hour. And, you know, she said, think of your billable time, you know, a full-time equivalent, you know, excuse a full-time person is 2,080 hours a year. And that's right. what you base your annual salary on. But you as a as an independent contractor or somebody who's started a business is not going to be working. Well, you would be working 2,080 hours, but you're not going to be billing for it. You know, yeah, you're probably working a lot right. more. So you have to factor that in. Like, how much do you need to make and how many hours do you need to be billable so that you can make a living or leave the hospital, right? Is it is it 80,000? Okay, so if you're charging, you know, $200 an hour, right, you need to make you know, uh, 400 out, like you got to figure that out yeah. and then figure out all the expenses. So it's a lot to figure out. And, you know, I used to joke, well, if it was that, if, you know, it's a great idea. And that's what I said that back in 99 and 2000, it's a great idea. No one's ever said horrible idea, Betty. But then I would follow up right. and say, would you pay for it? 
And then there was the pause, well, how much? And I was like, I don't know. But great idea. Are you going to pay for it? Right. Uh, it's really cool, Betty. Like, it's a, a remarkable journey, but it's also helped so many people over the years navigate healthcare and get better healthcare and appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a, we've had a 20 years. I mean, it's been a, it's a, yep. a great joy to me to, to look back and think about, you know, all the things I did to get to this point. And now we have, you know, over 50 people working on the team and we continue to grow because, you know, the, the idea of a nurse helping someone through the healthcare system <laughs> is a good idea because we, you know, we, we improve their care. Right. We, yeah. we definitely improve their experience because it, it's, uh, you know, it, healthcare is not a great place to be. And we um, certainly can have proven that we, through our work, has have um, reduced costs to a fund, uh, right. even, you know, even to private clients who call and and may have a bill. You know, like maybe they got a bill and they don't understand it. And maybe there was an error in the billing. They can't figure it out. They send it to us and we can figure it out. And in that sense, you know, maybe they pay us a thousand bucks, but the bill, you know, the $10,000 bill gets written off. Yeah, you know, that, correct. That, so, correct. you know, it's not just over the course of several years that we can prove our value. We can, we can prove our value. And, and of course that depends on how you define value. <laughs> That's another podcast. Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, let me, how is it for you? How is it? For you interviewing me, or not interviewing, but just having a conversation with me. Yeah, it, it's pretty normal. I feel like this is our normal conversation. I usually <laughs> ask you questions, you ask me questions, and it's a lot of back and forth. So it was yeah. very comfortable. Uh, you know, I didn't want to dig too, too deep into the weeds because I know we do have a, a focused period of time. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Thank you for yeah. letting me interview you. Yeah, and I I appreciate the the interest in, in not just the nurses month nurse or celebrating nurses I should say, but also in talking about entrepreneurship because I think there are a lot of clever creative nurses in the world, yeah. lots, lots and lots, and I would like them to, you know, know that and and you know think about yeah it's a good idea start talking about it and. Um, you know, think about, oh, well, let me put a plug in for the uh, Nightingale Awards of Pennsylvania has a an entrepreneurial award, which you have to apply for, but it is sponsored by Guardian Nurses. And their intent in doing that oh, was really great. to encourage, you know, nurses in the hospital to think of a different way to, you know, do something or, you know, right. like me, sit at lunch and think, I, I would like to do this business. Right. So there's money out the there. Food. There's also an organization called SANSEAL, which is the Society of Nurse Scientists, Innovators, Entrepreneurs, and Leaders. So it's an acronym for that, S-O-N-S-I-E-L. Uh, and they've been around maybe three years and have um, a pretty uh, uh, good website. They got a good organization and they're doing some good work and trying to, in, trying to encourage nurses to innovate and create even in their workplace, right. Just to get the juices flowing. Yeah. So um, if, as nurses who are thinking about that, I say, look it up, do your homework. And uh, maybe you can, you know, 20 years from now have a podcast with Rebecca. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> gold. <Hashtag> gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Rebecca. Well, thank I, I enjoyed the, I thank enjoyed you. telling my story. I enjoyed asking you your story. So thank you. Thanks. All right. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you next week. If you have any questions that you would like us to address in a future episode, please email us at podcast at guardiannurses.com. That email again is podcast at guardiannurses.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us this week. You can find the Lighting Your Way podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you liked what you heard, 
tell a friend and leave us a review. You can learn all about Guardian Nurses Healthcare Advocates on our website, guardiannurses.com. So until next time, find some joy in your life, pet all the good doggies and kitties, and remember to tell your people that you love them. Take care.